our emotions have run the gamut from, oh, it's such a beautiful cheek deck, why are we doing this? To, oh, it's probably for the best. To, oh my goodness, what have we gotten into? When the teak was removed, we initially questioned our decision. After all, look at how difficult it was to remove, how well it was bedded, how thick the teak was, and the fact that the boards had to be splintered and chiseled off. I rationalized this apparent waste by saying it was only a question of time before it would leak. With cool northers blowing, it was comfortable to sit in the sun and scrape away the black bedding compound, which has taken me days to do. Every eight inches, there was a row of screws that had formally screwed down the teak. A good portion of the screws had either been sheared off when the teak was chiseled off or had snapped when Pepe had tried to unscrew them. It fell to me to remove the screws as I scraped the decks. Lee had bought a variety of extractors and initially I carefully removed screws. Here I am using a wood plug cutter to cut around the screw. The fiberglass quickly dulled the tool and after going through two of them in quick succession and frustrated with my slow progress, I ended up getting downright vicious with a regular drill bit. With my evolving screw removal technique, I would drill a hole on either side of the screw body, not worrying about dulling the bit if it encountered the stainless. After all, drill bits are cheaper than wood plug cutters. Sometimes an additional hole would be needed before I would be able to withdraw the screw. Once removed, I used the drill bit to bevel the sides for better adhesion for the eventual injection of thickened epoxy. It may cost a little more in the long run to fill the enlarged holes with epoxy, but my workflow sped up considerably. While I was occupied on the deck, Lee was engaged with other tasks. On the crossing from Concepcion to Wymas, the alternator stopped working. While we were still in the water, Lee took a series of voltmeter readings and in consultation with his brother Dan, determined that there did appear to be a problem with the alternator. After hauling out, Lee took the alternator to a shop that specializes in alternator and starter repairs. The 100 amp stator in the alternator, which appeared to have been repaired before, was shorting and was not repairable. With the replacement of another lower 65 amp stator, the alternator was again able to charge. Lee reinstalled the alternator I held the water hose to the sea intake, Lee started the engine, and verified that it was indeed charging. An added benefit was a fresh water flush of our heat exchanger and wet exhaust system. Another of Lee's tasks was the removal of the black water discharge hose. When we converted to a composting head, we had left the discharge plumbing hose in place just in case the composting head did not work out for us. After more than four years, we have no intention of reverting to a traditional marine head and this will be the perfect opportunity to glass in the hole on the deck. Once my snail-like scraping progress took me to the foredeck, I discovered a remaining piece of teak under the bowsprit that Pepe had neglected to remove. It was difficult to access and Lee worked all morning to remove it completely. It is for this reason we are tackling 
the more difficult job of deck issues as we will not take shortcuts and we will make a thorough job of it. While drilling out holes for epoxy injection, I came to the realization that removing the teak was a good move, as some of the holes I was drilling had damp wood, indicating that there had been some water leakage from a few screws. That complacency soon changed to alarm when I drilled a series of holes along the port on the stern port side. The holes were in very soggy wood and we decided to remove the fiberglass skin to see just how bad the water intrusion was and to look for possible rot. The only available tools we could think of to use for this task was a circular saw set at a very shallow setting and a Dremel tool to cut the corners. It was gut-wrenching to hear the fiberglass tear apart and with trepidation Lee pulled back the skin. While there was widespread moisture, it was reassuring to find only small areas of rot. Our days have not been filled with just work. Before John and Christy departed for Alaska, we spent an evening with them in San Carlos. Then, more recently, there was the cruiser Potluck here at the Marina for St. Patrick's Day, and just night before last, a full moon get-together at El Mero. They were all much-needed diversions from the matter at hand. Next week, we will address further areas of concern on the deck and what we are going to do about it. So, until then!